we're talking about the seven things that lead to the highest kind of faith. And so, um, let's, let's get back here so we can share with you. Uh, the first one was uh, having an understanding of the integrity of God's Word, understanding our redemption in Christ, understanding the reality of the new creation, understanding the reality, reality of our fellowship with the Father, and understanding the authority of the name of Jesus. And so, let's get into it tonight. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and um, verses 14 through 16. And, uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to talk about understanding the reality of our righteousness. Understanding the reality of our righteousness. Uh, it says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? And what a concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what hath he who that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Here it states that we are righteous. It's talking about the fact that we as believers should not, uh, you understand there's a difference between ministering and, <clears throat> I mean, you know, if you can go out, you can go out and have dinner with a neighbor or go over to your neighbor's house and have dinner. If they're barbecue on the grill, invite you over. They're not saved, not Christian. You can go over and have dinner with them. That's not what he's talking about here. Right, right. Okay? But I'm going to tell you something. You can't go do everything you want to do. You can't vacation with them. It's been all your time with them. Uh, Why? Wow, they're unrighteous. They're, you're not walking in the same mindset. Okay. I also talk, I mean, unequally yoked with unbelievers. Women or men should not marry unbelievers. Right. Yeah. If you're a believer, you shouldn't be marrying an unbeliever. It's just, you just don't need to marry an unbeliever. I'll be honest with you, you really, you know, it's even difficult for Christians to marry from different denominations. Yeah. And really, really, I mean, because, because your cultural, your Christian cultural background is so different that it's going to cause problems. Yes, indeed. Go get you a wild open Pentecostal charismatic wild person Amen. and yeah, Karen, and go hook them up with the first church of the frozen chosen. The, some, a, a liturgical church. Then we have liturg litur other than Catholics, uh, we have liturgical churches, uh, the Presbyterians, Episcopals, Lutherans are very li liturgy based. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we get the word liturgical from, the liturgy based. You go hooking them up and get them married, and you're going to have issues. Because yeah. you've got a wild Holy Ghost person wants free services where they can flow with the Holy Ghost, and you've got somebody else where the service is so structured, everything, you can't, I mean, in, in the Episcopal Church, if you're not an Episcopal priest, you can't read from the epistles publicly. I was in a service, uh, and I was taking part in the service, but I, because I, and I was an ordained minister, but I wasn't an Episcopal priest. I was not permitted to read from the epistles. I could read from, I could read from the Gospels, but I couldn't read from the epistles. And we could not publicly read from them. Yeah. Put, you see, so you know, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And I just, I just carry that further to say that to, to marry... Um, in different denominations, particularly when they're, they're opposed. Now, let me just tell you women something. There are churches where the guys will come in, they'll say they'll put up with your charismatic, critical stuff until they say, I do, then they're going to say, I'm the head, you've got to go where I go. That's right. The day after you get married, That's right. they'll tell you whatever you want to hear just so that you'll say, I do. But the minute you say, I do, they say, I am. The great I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes it even happens when you get engaged and get the ring. Hallelujah. Enough said. <laughs> Hallelujah. But then the big dog shows up on the scene. Anyway, it's Romans chapter 3. <laughs> I told my daughter it was better to find out something beforehand than to have to come visit me in prison. <laughs> yeah, to come visit the church in prison. <laughs> my brother called me up and said, uh, when do you want me to show up with the truck and shovels? <laughs> We're going to the woods <laughs> and coming back with a lighter load. <laughs> Oh man, little. Anyway, he he was joking. He was joking. Just joking. This was just a joke. 
Romans 3, 23 through 26 says, For all his sin, back up, 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that, what? All them that, all them that be Leave. Now there's teachings going around right now uh, called universal uh, universalism or um, um, ultimate reconciliation. Everybody's saved. Everybody's already righteous. Well, that's not what it says here. That the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. You don't believe, you don't get. No believey, no getty. <laughs> All right? Put it down in little kitty terms. No believing, no getty. All right? Hallelujah. It says it's unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all, let's see, it's, 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 it's available to anybody that believes. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, praise God, we know that, uh, that all that we all have all sinned come short of the glory of God. Verse 24 says, being justified freely by His grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now what you have people do is they'll pick 24 up and just take it out. We're all justified by His grace freely. Yeah. And go out and start teaching. God's already justified you by His grace freely. It's in context. You always have to take the Bible in context yeah. of, its, of the sum, of the whole. You just can't pull stuff out and go teach stuff. It's Christians. Now I, listen, what sinners do, that's their business. I, you know, they're going to have to answer to God for that. I don't, I don't care. I don't really care. I mean, I care the effects it has on humanity. My job is to preach the truth. But I'm, what I'm saying is they, they, their opinion doesn't matter. Right. It's irrelevant. But to Christians, to be dishonest about spiritual things and pull out verse 24 and start telling everybody, you're already justified by His grace. You're freely, you have freely been justified. But that's not what it says. Because in context of verse 24, it says you have to believe to be justified freely by His grace. Because it's, it's unto all and upon all that believe. See? Now, it is free, but it is unto all and upon all that believe. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in His blood. What? Through faith. What's faith? Believing in His blood to declare His righteousness. See, it, it, that's why you can't take something out of the middle of something. On both sides of this scripture, be justified freely, it states belief or faith is involved in having that. Yeah, right. You can't redact those things from here and only pull out what you like. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. There you go again. But see, you go take verse 24 out and go start teaching some flaky doctrine. Everybody's already, everybody's already justified freely by his grace. Hallelujah. I got a scripture. It says we're all freely justified by scripture. I got three more right around that says it takes faith to receive it. That's right. Amen. Now, here's the deal. If you have exercised faith in Jesus Christ, you believed and received his lordship, then you, are, you have been justified. Justified, you got to understand that the term justification and righteousness, ju your justified is the legal term of what took place, righteousness is the result. Righteousness is then, or thus, the result of the justification. They are companion terms. When one is justified, he has become righteous. Okay? So justification is the legal act that enforces or, or per, per, uh, puts it into motion. Re uh, righteousness is the result of that act of justification. Did I lose anybody? Okay. So, 
when he is just, God is just, and he is the justifier, he is the one who exercises or enforces justification that produces the righteousness. Based on what? Verse 28. Oh, verse 27. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Not, to, listen, you got idiots out there, and I don't know what else to call them. They're dishonest. They're causing trouble in the body of Christ. That run around and say, I'm not under the law, I'm not under the law, I'm not under the law. And anytime you say something about what they're supposed to do, that's law, that's law, that's bondage, that's bondage. Yet the Bible calls faith a law. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it calls grace a law. Amen. Love a law. Yeah. There are different laws. Right. It's referring to the mosaic law of ritualistic worship in order to obtain righteousness. When you see Paul making a reference to that law, when he's just talking abstractly about law, he's referring to the Mosaic law and its ordinances and rituals that were designed to make man righteousness. Okay? That's what he's referring to. He is not referring to, you don't, I, I read an article the other day, and, and actually with our RMAI people, we had our, our, our dinner last Friday. Uh, we did it at the uh, Cabudos. It was just too much trouble for me to get from Nathan's ball game to the church to have dinner with everybody here and him playing scene. So we just met at Cabudos and ate. Everybody loved it. We, we, had a, we doubled up the price of the normal time, and we doubled up the number of people that came. So next time we're quadrupling the price. We're going to Ruth's Chris. We're going to, go, we're going to expect everybody in the whole district to show up. I'm just messing. But we, put, we printed an article by Tony Cook called, What Does It Mean That I'm Not Under the Law? And he, he covers it. And one of the statements he makes, and this is, the, this is really the thesis of his, whole, of his whole article. When people say I'm not under the law, it does not mean that they are to engage in lawlessness. Some people purport that. No, we're, we're, we're not under law is not meaning lawlessness. Okay? And Paul says here, verse, then he goes on to verse 28 and says this, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith. Now what's justified? It is the legal term of the act that produces what? Righteousness. Justification is the act, the legal, legal term, in reference to the act that produces in us right. righteousness. That's one more chance. Justification is the legal term that refers to the act in which man has been made, or the end result is right. righteousness. Amen. We conclude a man is justified by faith. In other words, righteousness comes through faith in Christ. There is a legal, there is a spiritual, legal action that is taking place, and that is justification. And that justification produces in you righteousness. You are legally, through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you have, so let's, let's kind of flip over to Romans, I mean not Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians 5. With those things in mind. Now let me say this, you're not going to become righteous one day. You are not an old sinner saved by grace. The Bible doesn't even refer to you that way. You were a sinner, you were saved by grace, but now... According to Romans chapter 5, verse 21, For he hath made him sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. There has been an action called justification. I'm sorry, that, that, that spaghetti is just resonating. <laughs> resonating. Hallelujah. It was good. Was it good? Who has some spaghetti? Ooh. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. All right. He's made him sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
<clears throat> that process of him being made sin, and you know sin, being raised, remember what it says, raised again for our justification. What's the purpose of justification again? To make us righteous. The whole purpose of bringing us through the process of justification is to once again place man in a righteous or right standing relationship with the Father. You understand? The process of justification, which is through faith in Jesus Christ, we're justified by faith and not by the deeds of the law. But that process is a legal action that places us into a position of right standing or righteousness with the Father. You have to understand that. You are in a spiritual, legal sense in right standing with the Father. Now, now, really, um, uh, we, we refer to the uh, first ten amendments to the Constitution as what? Come on, guys, your, your civics lesson here. The Bill of Rights. They were originally called the Bill of Righteousness. Yeah, because, well, because it meant right standing. And see, by making it rights, I got a right. Well, really, it was, if you understand it in terms of righteousness, right standing with, they were the bill of people who were in right standing with the government. We know this because felons give up those rights. Yeah. Felons no longer have the right to bear arms. You see? They were bills or amendments added to the Constitution for men and women that were in a right relationship with the government of the United States of America. Are you here? Amen. You are not allowed to promote uh, uh, seditious speech, treasonous speech. Yeah. But we have the right, you see, well, well, well I, got, I got freedom of speech. No, you're not right in relationship with the government when you're you, uh, using seditious or treasonous speech. You lose that, that, you don't have that right standing, therefore you don't have that right. right. See? So they were really the bill of right standing. Bills, the bills of right standing. I got freedom of speech, I got freedom of religion, I've got freedom of the press, I got the right to bear arms, da 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 da. You go get yourself become a felon and you lose all those rights. Y'all here, you go home. And I say that just to show you the force of righteousness. We are in a right standing relationship with the Father. Now, when we say we have rights, they are based on our, our standing. Right. All humanity does not have the right to prosper with God. If they're not born again, you're not in right standing with Him. Amen. You don't have the right to those, those privileges. Yes, they're based on a right standing, a right, a relationship of right standing with God. And so, when we understand that, it helps our faith. Why? Because when you know that you have a right standing with the Father, then you can approach Him based on that position you have with Him. Yes. So we're talking about getting to the highest kind of, these are steps to the highest kind of faith. If you understand your position with the Father, it undergirds and supports your position of faith. Because you know you have the right relationship with Him. Now let's face it, um, Dick, you're not quite old enough to be my dad. Benny, how old are you? You can be my dad. You've been young, but you could be my dad. <laughs> All right? Now, Benny's old enough to be my dad. But he's not my dad. Now, my dad lives, is now living in, down in Myrtle Beach. And um, now I can, go, I can go by Benny's house. I can leave here tonight, get his address out of the database, go to his house. But I'll tell you what, I better not just walk up to his house, kick the door and walk in, go to his refrigerator, open it, pull out anything, go sit down on his couch. Daddy. Why? Now, Benny may, may be gracious to me since I'm the pastor. But that would be the only reason. Because if anybody else did it, and probably me too, they might get shotgunned out of the house. Why? Because I don't have that standing with him that everything is his, is his, is, that is his, is mine. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I can drive down to Myrtle Beach right now, walk by Dad's house, 
I don't have to knock on the door. I just walk, walk, get it, walk in. I go to, I don't even have to say hey to them. Go to the refrigerator, open it up, see what's in there. Find something I like, pull it out, sit down, start drinking or eating it. Put my feet, get, get in his chair. <laughs> Kick the recliner up. Lean back. Yeah. And then, oh, hey, Pop. <laughs> what's on TV? I have a standing with him that's right. I have a relationship and standing with him that permits me to walk in that place with him. And see, I know that. Now, Janie used to be uncomfortable because I because she wasn't used to this kind of thing. When we first got married, we, I'd go over to the house. I'd walk and say, hey, walk right straight to the refrigerator. Start, start ramaging. Ram, not ramaging. Rummaging. Damaging the, the, the goods. It's damaging. That's, that's ramaging. You're rummaging to damage the, the supply. I'd open up little side cabinets look for zero bars. That's my favorite candy bar, especially good fresh ones. Give me a good fresh zero bar. I mean, they're the kind that are, they're not hard. That made me speak in tongues. Hallelujah. See, I had that with my dad. Jane was really unconscious. Said, honey, you can't do it. What? She's like, it was, she was totally blown away I was doing that. She couldn't understand, how can you do that? What do you mean? You, you still walk in your mom and dad's house. Why not? I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't even fathom the concept that she had that I couldn't do it. Just because I got married and don't live in here anymore don't mean I can't don't have access to the fridge. I know what a stash is. And then when I got there, I went straight for the stash. And if, it won't, if they had moved it, where, where, where are the zero bars? Oh, we moved one in that cabinet over there. And it wasn't like, you can't have any. It's not like they're in that cabinet. We moved them to that cabinet. Okay. Yeah. She just could not fathom that. Because she just didn't understand that. You know? And the thing was, I just did it to her mom and dad too. <laughs> Walk in the fridge, look, see, you got, you got, you got Mountain Dews, Cokes, Pepsi, what, what you got in here? I got some ham. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, man, I just had an understanding of being part of family. <laughs> but Benny may not want me coming in doing that. And quite frankly, I, would, I wouldn't try it because I don't know if he wants, would allow me to do that or not. So I'm not going to go do that. I put pre presumptions on him. And this is where Christians come a lot of times. They don't know their father. And they don't know their basis of relationship with him. And because and I, have, I have fellowship with Benny. We have, we're, in a, we're in a relationship. The pastor and church member. Hallelujah. But I don't know how far that, that carries over to me just showing up in his house and walking in unannounced and, and, and rummaging through his refrigerator. Now, Benny, would, would, would that be proper for me to do that? If I want to, I can. <laughs> but the consequences could be. <laughs> <clears throat> but you understand. See, I don't know. There's a lot of people don't know their father. And they don't know that they're righteous with him. They're in a right standing relationship with him. Because they've been told God's mean, God's evil, God's going to get you, God don't want you to have anything, yada, yada, yada. And they haven't come to know their position with him as a position of righteousness. They have right standing with the Father. So I have the right to show up to my Father's house and walk in and open up the refrigerator and grab me up some prosperity, get me a glass of healing, Glory to God. Get me a, si a dessert out of the freezer, probably, praise God, of, um, uh, uh, of, um, of peace in my house. Praise God. I got, I got access to all that's in the cupboards. Hallelujah. Open up the cupboard, look in there. For me, just a, just a, just a, little, just a little taste. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you, are you here? A victory. Praise God. It's all up in the cabinet. Amen. See, I just, I, I'm in Father's house, and that's all there in provision, praise God. And because I'm righteous, I have a right standing, and I know that, I can go in and obtain that what? By faith. I'm walking in faith without even ex, ex, cognitively understanding that it's faith. 
because I understand my relationship with my father. Then every, all he has becomes available to me. I don't go to my, my dad's house and say, Mom, Dad, can I have such and such? Why? <laughs> if it's theirs, it's mine. Yeah. Hello? Amen. I'm just telling you. If there's a zero bar on the counter, I don't care who they bought it for, it's mine. I mean, I could be sitting there chomping down up there and say, well, we bought that for your brother. Well, he'll just have to get him another. This is mine. <laughs> you, you got plenty more where I came from. There's plenty of supply here. Amen. Well, your brother's coming over, and I bought it just so he'd have one. Well, praise God, I, I got here first. And I'm son, too. Praise God. That is because I understand my relationship. Yeah that I'm in right standing with. Amen. And when you understand that you're in right relationship with God the Father, he who knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Through Jesus Christ, we have right standing with the Father. Amen. Then whatever need we have, whatever supply we have need of from him, it's in the cupboards. It's in the fridge. Amen. And you're welcome just to walk in and pick it up and take it. Amen. Amen. Hello? Don't you have to ask permission? Amen? Amen? I mean, keep the house, go by, they're not in town, go in. <laughs> I still go to the refrigerator. What's in here? <laughs> also, oh, man, got three musketeers this week. Okay, I'll take that. Hey, call them up. Hey, look, y'all you know, weren't home when Bobby said that three musketeers bar was good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. We understand that. Isaiah 45. Does that help you see anything there? Yeah. We can look at uh, verse uh, 22. Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord, <laughs> excuse me, surely one shall say in the Lord I have righteousness, and strength even to him shall men come. And all that are incensed against them shall be ashamed. And the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. In the Lord. For he hath made him sin who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He hath made him sin who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be, ju be justified and shall glory. Who's Israel? Israel was the seed of Abraham. If you be Abraham's seed, then if you be Christ, then Abraham's seed, then heirs according to the promise. But one shall surely say, in the Lord have our righteousness. But what happens when you have righteousness? You have access to all that is provided by the Father. Man, that ought to boost your faith. Yeah. Because of my standing with him. See, sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes we make faith hard. But we need, that's, that's why this one of, the, one of the points of achieving the highest kind of faith is to understand who we are in Christ, that, that we're the righteousness of God in Christ. I have a right, a right to it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Benny might tell me, he said, Pastor, come over to my house anytime you want to, just walk in anytime you want to, and get anything you want out of my refrigerator, anytime you want to. Well, his wife may not appreciate that at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Hello. I'm still going to be a little tepid about that. But my mom and dad, you come on anytime you want to. If I show up at 2 o'clock in the morning, knock on the door, I expect them to open. Let me in. And feed me. Y'all got anything in the fridge? 
You, you kind of know where I go first when I get somewhere. Yeah. I'm rummaging, man. I'm looking in the fridge first thing. What's in there? And if I don't like it, I say, y'all need to get rid of these Sam Coles and get Cokes. I do. You know? I used to drink Czech root beer and lemon lime stuff as a kid. Y'all know the uh, Winn-Dixie. Czech Cola. Uh, Czech Cola. Czech root beer. Czech lemon lime. Uh, Shunda. I don't want no Czech root beer when I can have me the IBC. Man, we went up to have built more uh, when Nathan was on his, one of his trips. We went up for, went overnight and spent the night, and then went up to the, and then we went up to the creamery they got up there near the uh, the um, winery. Now they got a creamery with built they use built more ice cream and stuff. I had me a root beer, IBC root beer float with that ice cream. I got filled with the Holy Ghost all over again. <laughs> they give you the bottle and, you know, and put all this. And so they pour it over then, and then you just keep eating it down and pour more over it as you go. It's godly. I'm just telling you it was godly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shunda. Ooh, yeah. Be like Sister Wilkerson. And to the glory. Anyway. Hallelujah. But no, she's, you know, here, uh, he says, I swore by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth, and righteousness shall not return. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Remember, Paul quotes that in the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians. Amen. He carries it further that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And in the Lord shall I have righteousness. See, when we confess, when we in the body confess him as Lord, we have righteousness. Amen. All right, look at Jeremiah 23. Glory to God. I know we're running a little bit later tonight. And, um, but part of that's because we had the dinner. If you didn't come, you missed out because it was, it was a good batch of spaghetti sauce. I'll tell you that. Good batch of spaghetti sauce. Mm. Behold, verse 5, Behold the days come, saith the Lord, and I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Everybody's wanting justice. We'll just go follow the Lord. See, there's no such thing as social justice. That's, that's a, that, that's, that's, all that means is every group gets to have their equal say about everything. Everybody's all getting anything they want just because they've identified themselves as a, as a particularly uh, special group. That's what social justice is all about. It's really about marginalizing any form of absolutes to the point that there is nothing that is absolute anymore. There are no laws. It's whatever somebody feels like is right. More relativism. Anyway, but the Lord's a righteous. He executes judgment and righteousness or justice in the earth. But he's the righteous branch. Hallelujah. And we're in that branch. 1 Corinthians 1.30. For in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to wrap up here. But of him. Let's see, 1 Corinthians 1.30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Who is of God made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Notice it says, in, in Christ, who of God is made unto us. He is our wisdom. He is our righteousness. He is our sanctification. He is our redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. When we testify, testify about Jesus. Testify what he's done for you. Amen. You see that song, when I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, when I think of his goodness and how he set me free, I could dance, 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 dance all night, all night. When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me, when I think of his goodness and what is how he set me free, I could shout, 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 shout all night, all night. <laughs> anyway, we could just go on. Pastor Ed, this is one man show. Hallelujah. <laughs> We ought, to, we ought to testify the Lord. 
Amen? Amen. Uh, the Lord shall always be our testimony. Not about, you know, listen, it's not how great I am. We don't sing how great I am, how great I am. The song is how great thou art, how great thou art. Amen? It's how great God is. Go, if your kids come home with a pair of pajamas that say it's all about me, burn them. <laughs> Do what? The pajamas, not the kids. Just keep it straight. <laughs> I said it that way on purpose so you could just try to figure out which one I meant. <laughs> That's right, you which are spiritual. <laughs> if I judge, my judgment is just. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Janie went on, uh, when Shannon was in the eighth grade, yeah, the, uh, the eighth grade biology class always, if you have a certain grade, you get to go on this trip down to Wilmington. They go to the aquarium and all this stuff. They go out in the marshes and all that kind of stuff. And it's a really fun trip for the kids. And uh, she chaperoned one year when Shannon was there. And they were in the hotel and spending the night. And, and, and out comes this girl with these pajama pants on. And all over the pants, written in different angles and different colors, it said, it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. And of course, knowing the kid, it was all about her. You know, any parent that bought that for their kids ought to be taken out back and beat. <laughs> Teaching them the wrong lesson. Are you here? You're going home. Philippians 3 9 says, And being found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. When we understand that through the new birth, through the process of just, or, or act, and when I say, I'm using process, it's not a process like, you know, it's going to take six years, you know, when you, when you confess faith in Jesus Christ and believe that God's raised us from the dead, that process is instant. Okay? I'm just, I'm, I'm using that word, maybe it's the right word, through the act. Okay? So that you won't think it's a long-term process. Through the act of justification, you have been declared righteous. The, the result of your justification is that you are righteous through faith in Christ Jesus. And because of that, because you have exercised that faith, and because you have experienced intimately and personally the act of justification, you are now righteous. And because you are righteous, you have a right relationship with the Father. And because you have a right relationship with the Father, amen? You have access to all that he has and all that he provides and all that he desires for you to walk in. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, look over there, you see it in your Bible. 1 Peter. Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives. lives in the, I haven't heard that song, song in so long. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. I was just kind of humming that song. There you go. Sometimes it's just like, you know, I just, we're so caught up with the modern type of worship, we've lost sight of some stuff that was really good. There's some good stuff out there. There's old hymns that are really good. Got good now, not everything you've seen is going good, but not, not all the new stuff is either. There's, some, there's a lot of the new stuff that's just so full of unbelief and doubt and garbage, they ain't anymore singing just even though they got a cool uh, medley to them or whatever. First Peter chapter, Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, back at verse 2. 
3. I mean, verse 3. According as the divine power hath given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us unto glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in this world through lust. Now think about that now. He says that um, he's given us all things pertaining to life and knowledge, uh, godliness, what? Through the knowledge of him. Come on down a little bit, Sonny, about the epinosis of God. Clear, price, clear, precise, and accurate knowledge of God. So you can be born of God and not know God. There's a lot of Christians who are born again who love God. They don't know Him. They don't know His will concerning His Word. They don't know about the exceeding great and precious promises. They just know that they love God. And they, and they adopt, uh, in many times, a fatalistic approach to um, life in that, you know, whatever happens, happens. God's got a purpose in it. And if it's bad, that that's just what God intended. And, and they just demonstrate that there are things that are given to them that, con that concern concerning life and godliness. They're not walking in because they don't know Him. They're born of Him, but they don't know him. There's a lot of Christians who don't know the, the righteousness of God in Christ and they're not walking in their privileges the way they should because they don't have an understanding of that relationship with the Father. Amen. That's what God wants you to have.